concentration. All right, so b- welcome back to another episode here on Sandy Bay Media. Make sure to give us a like and a follow. We're joined by Ange, who is a player in the NSL era, and we're going to get to know a, bit, a little bit about his journey and as well as about him. Can you just introduce yourself, mate? Yeah, hi, Rahid. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Ange Gutsiolas. Yep. I'm a former NSL player for three different clubs. Yep. And uh, just happy to have a chat with you about my experiences and about the game in general. Brilliant. Um, So what clubs did you play at and how did you get involved in football? Well, I started off as a junior at South Melbourne. Yeah. And played there till I was uh, up to the under 18s. Yep. And um, basically, basically how it turned out, I was probably, I was only 15 years old playing for the under 18s. And yep. uh, um, I ended up leaving South Melbourne because yep. I was told that um, I wouldn't make the level further than that, basically. So yep. I had no other choice but to leave. And then I joined um, Caulfield City, who were in the uh, premier, uh, state, the old state league those days. Yeah. Um, I just started playing reserves from the get-go. I think I played three games for Caulfield City in the reserves and mm-hmm. all the strikers at the club really got injured, to be yeah, quite yeah. honest. And uh, I got my senior opportunity at Caulfield really by default. <laughs> and, uh, and lucky for me, I I played... I scored a hat-trick in my first game against <laughs> Bulleen. Yeah. Then uh, I, I proceeded to play another seven games straight after that, even yeah. when the experienced players came back. And um, I was quite lucky. I ended up scoring 18 goals, I think, in the State League from about seven games. And then Heidelberg <laughs> signed me to go play in the National League from there. So I was um, quite lucky, really. Yeah. So around what year was this around? Oh, that this was nineteen eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yes. Yep. Where I basically transferred from Caulfield City to Heidelberg. And um what was that experience like when you travel uh when you did make that jump? Well I you know what I I'd only played, like I said, seven or eight senior games uh for Caulfield City. Yeah. And you were still quite young, weren't you? Yeah, I was only 17, so yeah. um, I, I wasn't really expecting a lot. But in saying yeah. that, in saying that, Heidelberg paid money for me, so yeah, that sort of showed me that they were keen and I, that and that I would be given a chance. Yes. So luckily for me, you know, I went there and uh, I took my chance basically and. Started off with the senior team straight away and just stayed there, de- start, um, stayed there till I left the club basically, which yeah. happened to be seven or eight years later. Okay, so you were there for a while, yeah, sure, yeah. And, um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience and that 78 years? At yeah, well, Heidelberg at the time was uh, probably the second biggest Greek club in the National League behind South Melbourne. So there was always a big rivalry there. Yeah. Uh, Heidelberg at the time was a club that didn't really have a lot of money. So yep. the club really couldn't go out there and get big um, big players to come to the club. Yes. So there was a stage there we got relegated. Uh, okay. As well, so we had to play a year in the uh, state league, but we bounced back, yeah, pretty quickly. And to be quite honest, that was my first year of joining the club, okay. So, the first year I joined, I went from state league to national league, then we got yeah. relegated back to state league, yeah. And then you know, but in saying that, the club was always a strong club, so mm. considering, considering the club didn't have a lot of money to spend. Yep. Every year, it was a battle just to stay in the National League, which in turn, at the end, for myself at Heidelberg, yep. um, when South Melbourne came in for me, who were regular finals players, yes. it was a no-brainer, and I joined them. Mm. And now, speaking of South Melbourne, 
um, what was that like in your first couple of years then? What year did you go to South? Yeah, I, I think I got to South Melbourne about oh, 1993. I stayed for two years. So yep. um, for me then, it, I went from a club that was battling to win week in, week out to a yep. club that was expected to, to win week, to win week, out, week in, week out. And it was yep. really an enjoyable occasion because every player wants to play for the best clubs in the land. Yeah, yeah. So I was quite lucky where I ended up turning out and playing for the club where I actually started my career as a junior and yeah. they let me go. So um, they thought I wasn't good enough. In the end, really, yeah. they, spent, they spent quite a bit of money to bring me back. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny how some things work out. Exactly. And um, how was your season, your career, and those two years that you spent at South Melbourne? Like Oh, I absolutely loved the experience. Um, I was there for two years, but then, uh, well, well, we had missed out on finals and the club, no, we played finals, sorry, the second year I was there. We lost in the, pre in the preliminary final to Adelaide City. Uh, but okay. I think the club took a stance where they were going to release a lot of the players and give a lot of the juniors an opportunity to come through. Yep. And I remember Frank Garrock basically got rid of half the squad. Okay. Um, I was quite lucky. I was kept on. Yeah. But um, the, re the only reason why I left, I hate to say this, but it was the only reason I really left South Melbourne to join Adelaide City, who are another powerful club. Yeah. Only because they increased my wages by about 30%. Okay. That makes, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So... I had to think of myself and at the time I was married. So, mm. you know, it was, it was a job to me. And if I could, if I thought I could make some extra money uh, and continue my career, yeah, it would have been great. But in saying that, as soon as I went to Adelaide city, I signed a two year contract. I only stayed for a year. Yeah. I'd broken, I'd broken my leg pretty badly. And, um, it was once I did get back to fitness, it was pretty hard for me to get back in the team because the team was always winning. So yeah. every year we get an Adelaide City winning the the title or, or South Melbourne or Melbourne Croatia, nothing changed. So yeah. if you're at a big club like that, you need to be playing. Exactly. Because you're not playing very hard to get back into the team. It definitely is. Um, and how did you, oh, you obviously just mentioned it was difficult to get back into it. Um, what were you doing to get back into it and how was that like? Oh, look, when you're out injured, it's not fun. No. No, because you're spending a lot of time on your own doing rehabilitation. Mm. So you're always thinking that uh, you're going to get better. Yeah. But in saying that, you know what? I look back and I probably could have done my rehab a little bit better. I could have been a little bit more disciplined with yeah. my rehab, uh, probably my social sort of life took sort of a, a priority over my recovery, really. Yeah. So, you know, and naturally my days at LA City after that were numbered. So I saw the writing on the wall. Yeah. Fair enough. And then I know you went to coaching, you got involved in coaching afterwards. Oh, no, yeah, I, I ended up playing many years after that. Okay. You know, in the Premier League here, various clubs. Yep. And then I ended up uh, coaching a few teams with reasonable success. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was pretty rewarding. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a massive difference between playing to oh. manage the team and looking after 30 or 35 players from reserves yes. to senior the club. Well, yeah. Um, and how did you find that experience? How did you find it going from coaching to playing? I know you managed to do as difficult, uh, that it's a big difference, but what was your personal experience like? Look, I, at times I thought coaches were a little bit overboard with trainings and with everything. I sort of had my own philosophies of how the game should be played. Yeah. Um, training wise. Um, but, I sort of, uh, I would like to think I was a, a mellow sort of coach because, uh, you know, you don't get 
much out of players if you've got a coach who's constantly screaming at them. So no. I always thought, you know, it was okay to give a player a rev up when he was needed, yes. only only when he was needed. But yeah, if yeah. it happens all the time, players get sick of your voice and you basically lose your players. So yeah. I sort of looked at the way I like I like to be treated as a player. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I brought that to my coaching. So it's a it's a balancing act because it you is. can't you can't be the player's best friend. No. But there's got to be a bit of mutual respect there as well. Exactly. All right. Um, just to wrap things up, um, we know that you kind of stepped away from football for a little bit of time. Yes. Look at that. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't been involved in the game now for the last uh, 10 years. Yep. Um, it's mainly, there's, there's, there's a few factors for that. Yeah. But uh, one, I don't really agree with what the uh, Victorian Soccer Federation does with, um, yeah. with basically coaching courses and coaching um, and whatnot. Because yeah. these uh, courses are very expensive. But that's not only for courses. That, that sort of applies a lot to, to junior football at the moment. Hmm. And we're losing a lot of good young kids because parents can't afford the junior fees to play, especially if the the kids are at NPL clubs. So that's that's not the reason. But the main reason for me is, you know, I started playing soccer where when I was 11 years of age and I had my last semi-professional game, really, at the age of 39. Wow. I, I got back into coaching. Yeah, I did it for about seven or eight years. Yep. And uh, to be quite honest, I was really over the game. Yeah, you get burnt out. Yeah, um, yeah. I still love the game. Yeah. But I'm not as passionate about the game. That's a, I understand that completely. Yeah, you know, there's people that are that love it and are passionate twenty four seven. Yeah. I was, but in saying that, I was never like that, even as a player. Yeah, you know, like I, I love the game. Yes, I was lucky to do what I did for so long. Yeah, it was at a professional level or semi-professional level and getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. But after a while, it's uh, it's uh, it's a very sort of uh, it's very it's a hard feeling to describe because the way I, was, the only way I can sort of explain it is. The moment you start getting paid, yeah, it becomes a job. It, yes. So therefore, when it becomes a job, mm-hmm. it comes with stress. So especially if you're playing NFL or A League, it doesn't matter what level you're playing at, where yep. you're getting paid, mm-hmm. you're only as good as your last game. Exactly. So you know, if you put two, or three, or four bad games together, basically your career is done. So, yeah. so that's the uh, that's the thing I don't miss about the game. That's a fair enough point, mate. I, I completely understand where you're coming from on that. I think I experienced the same thing when I went through coaching. It became more of a profession and a day job rather than enjoyment. And coaching, remember, mm. they hire you to fire you. They don't hire you to retire you. Nah, coaches don't get retired. No, There's no such thing. Yeah, so, uh, and um, that's the life of a coach. Mm -hmm. I was quite lucky. I only got sacked once. Yep. But that was under a lot of bars, I should say. You know, when you're second in the league and you get sacked, there's there's other things behind that. Yeah. That was probably my bitter moment. But... All in all, I've been lucky with the game. The game's been good for me. Mm. I like to think I've contributed. And basically, like anything, one player or coach goes, is quickly replaced by another player and coach. So the game will always involve. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us today and being part of the NSL project. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Ray. Take care.
You too. And spread your love of football around. Exactly.